what is the compiler's responsibility like uh, so this access link is fine so we have to uh, go by the access link to uh, come to the corresponding uh, definition of a uh, name of, a, of an identifier but how the compiler will generate code so that this access will be correct so first thing that it has to do is to find the difference d between the ne lexical nesting level of declaration of the name and the lexical nesting level of the procedure referring to it so this is uh, basically uh, in our previous case previous example that we had so we were referring to x and then uh, the, so it it is defined it is uh, 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 so this is at uh, uh, this is uh, this was at uh, procedure p and procedure p's uh, nesting level was uh, some uh, say uh, 2 because main was 1 and p was 2 and then this uh, it, it is now at uh, the current procedure that we are referring is a procedure r whose nesting level is 4 so it has to go by 4 minus 2 so it has to go by two access links further to uh, come to the proper definition of x so this will generate code for following d access links to reach the right activation record and then it will generate code to access the variable through offset mechanism so we'll take an example and uh, explain it so like in the previous case uh, what we had so this was the program that we are talking about so here we have got a number of variables so x y z etc now uh, suppose uh, suppose we are at a situation where uh, uh, from the main routine the p1 has been called okay so when the p1 has been called so uh, in p1 it has got reference for this x y and z and this uh, p1's uh, uh, so this access link points to the main uh, it corresponds to the parent frame so that is m so it is point p the access link is pointing to uh, m similarly so from p1 when this uh, after uh, from this procedure p uh, we are going to call q so this is the begin of p so from here we are going to call uh, q so when this call q is made so this uh, so this uh, q is invoked and then it has got it, its access link is pointing to p because q is defined within p okay so if you call if we have to look for uh, some definitions so we have to look into the uh, local variables of p first okay so if it is uh, so like this x uh, so x is not defined in uh, in q in, in the procedure q okay so uh, so it is uh, so this is not defined in the procedure okay? so this variable y is referred to so y is not defined in the procedure q so when it is trying to get the corresponding declaration for a y so it has to look into the uh, activation record uh, the uh, it has to look into the activation record for the nesting procedure and the nesting procedure happens to be procedure uh, q so this uh, this uh, this r it points to procedure q and q it points to procedure p so so that is the situation where this uh, m has given a call to p p has given so this is m has given a call to p at this point p has uh, given a call so it has uh, the main has uh, call given a call to p okay then p has given a call to q so this is the p so it has given a call to q and q has given a call to r so so this this call has been made and we are in this procedure so we are in this procedure then that is the situation that is depicted by the first diagram okay so it has not yet made this call for procedure p so you can say that as if we are somewhere here okay so at this point uh, that this is the situation of the activation record uh, that in the stack so this uh, uh, these solid lines are the uh, control links and these dotted lines are the access links so this access links so they are pointing to the corresponding procedure into which we have to look into now the situation changes when we have got uh, uh, this thing see this uh, see this uh, one say so this uh, when uh, fr from this uh, p when from this r when this p is called again so another frame gets created and this uh, p2 is uh, this frame p2 is pushed into the stack and then uh, this uh, fra this frame pointer uh, so this uh, control link points to the uh, the parent uh, frame from where it was called and the access link for p so see now it uh, points to this points to m why 
this procedure P is C is uh, statically nested within M. So, it is not, so though it has been called uh, from R, so this call is from R, but R is not the place where it should look for some variable which are uh, which may be undefined in P. So, uh, so for all the variables that this P2 wants to access, so it has got this local variable spines, but uh, if, it, uh, if it has to access in the code for P, if there are some access to some variables which are defined uh, in, the fun in the main, then in that case it will be going into this. So, you see that the control link points to R1, but the access link points to M. Okay, so, this is the situation at this point. Now, after uh, from this, uh, if I if I think that this P call has been made, and uh, within from uh, from this P call, so uh, it has given a call to Q, and Q has given a call to R. So then that this is the situation at that point. So this M P1 Q1 R1, so that was remaining from R1, a call to P has been made. So this is P2. So access link points to the main routine, control link points to R1 uh, the, the, the access link points to the uh, frame corresponding to main and this uh, control link points to the frame corresponding to R1. And from P uh, to another call to Q has been made. So, this Q frame has been the uh, activation record for Q has been created and then this points to the uh, this access link points to uh, the uh, activation record for P because this uh, procedure Q is defined within procedure P. So, that is uh, the, the statically nested thing. So, Q is within uh, statically nested uh, group of P, procedure P. So, that way this access link points to P and then this control link also points to P because from P this call to Q has been made. Okay, so, both of them are done like this and uh, you note that this Q it, it is not pointing to M, the access link is not pointing to M because Q is defined within procedure P. So, for definition it has to look into procedure P only. So, this way this access link and control link, so they can be useful for uh, getting the uh, uh, getting access to local uh, proper variables that we need for a particular program for a particular procedure. Okay. And uh, for a part defined depending upon the language the uh, this nesting rules will come and based on that the compiler generator can design this portion. Now, so, that is the situation. So, what the compiler designer has to do is to find the difference D between the lexical nesting level of the declaration name of the name and the lexical nesting level of the current procedure. And after knowing that, so it will be it will generate code so that at run time the system will traverse D such links and it will come to the uh, proper frame. And after coming to the proper uh, after coming to the proper frame, so it can use the offset mechanism that we have discussed previously to uh, come to the exact location where that particular uh, um, uh, variable occurs. Okay. Now, now you see that this is a very uh, cumbersome thing because what is happening is that as this nesting level increases, so you, you uh, there is a there get tree like this. So this will be this will be growing like this, and then uh, for if something is defined at level m, for example, then it has to go through all these levels. So it has to traverse through a large number of links to come to m. So, can we do something so that it uh, may be made faster? Okay? And for doing it faster, so there is a concept called display. So, this display has got nothing to do with uh, say um, computer display and all. So, this is a data structure and in the display data structure, so we store um, the relevant uh, pointers to the, the to this activation record stack. So, we will see how this thing works. So, it is the difficulty in non-local definitions is to search by the by following access links. So, that we have understood because if there, if there are non-local definitions, so you have to for go by the access links only to uh, explore uh, the uh, previous procedures and come to the proper definition. And particularly for virtual paging environment, certain portion of the stack containing activation records may be swapped out and access may be very slow. So, what it means, so virtual paging is a memory management policy where we keep only a few pages of an executing program into the main memory. 
So, uh, so uh, the idea is that uh, we can uh, we do not load the entire program into main memory at any point of time. So, only the relevant pages are loaded and then after after some time if a reference is made to a page which is not present in the main memory then a page fault occurs and the uh, system will uh, system will tell the disk controller to transfer uh, the proper pages from the disk to the main memory and then the execution of that process resumes. So, it becomes slow because in between the disk controller has to come into uh, play. So, so if, if, if it happens like this that this stack becomes very large then the system may decide that okay, I will be swapping out some portions of the stack for uh, some uh, more important jobs and then this activation. So, as a result some of some part of the activation record may be swapped out from the main memory. So, this will make the access very slow and uh, how to solve this problem. So, we, we are trying to look for some solutions which are similar to the cache memory type of organization where the uh, most uh, important and most uh, relevant portions. So, they are kept in some uh, uh, fast accessible memory. So, here also we do something like this. So, we use a data structure called a display which will be used to access variables without search. Okay. So, how are you going to do this? So, this is the situation. So, we have got uh, this uh, uh, this uh, m. So, the, this suppose this was the these were the procedures m, p, q and r. So, at this point of time m has given a call to p, p has given a call to q and q has given a call to r. So, that is the situation. So, there are 4 procedures which are active at this point of time. So, 4 activation records are important at this point. So, accordingly this display point uh, display has got uh, 4 uh, levels 1, 2, 3 and 4. Level 1 points to m, level 2 points to p1, 3 points to q1 and r point, 4 points to r1. Now, once the compiler knows that okay, the, the difference between this uh, current position and uh, this um, uh, definition is by certain number of access links. So, it can uh, go uh, up or down by so many access links from here and uh, directly come to this. For example, to go two step backwards, so if the current level is 4, it will do 4 minus 2. So, it will come to this one and accordingly it will be accessing p1. So, it does not need to go through this uh, pointers through this q1 to reach p1. So, from r1 it can immediately reach p1. Similarly, after some time when p r1 uh, has given a call to p, so another uh, activation record p2 is created. Now, you know that p2's uh, variables, so they are all defined in m. So, if something is not available within p2, no, that, that becomes non-local for p2, then it needs to look for m. So, the nesting level of p2 is 2 and nesting level of m is 1. So, if it uh, if uh, if the compiler finds that it has to go by access links, so the difference will be 2 minus 1 equal to 1. So, d will be equal to 1. So, from this it will be just uh, going by uh, 1 level and it will be coming to m and get it done, get the uh, things. So, let us try to explain what are we uh, uh, writing here. So, what is display? Display is a global array of pointers to activation records indexed by lexical nesting depth. So, this is uh, so this is a for this is an array of pointers to activation record and index is lexical nesting depth. So, this m the main routine will have uh, depth 1 then the procedures that uh, the, the based on this static nesting. So, they will be having 1, 2, 3, 4 like that. Element d i points to the most recent activation of the block at nesting depth i. So, this is the d i. So, a non-local x will be found like this that if the most closely nested declaration of x is at nesting depth i, then d i points to the activation record containing the location for x. So, so uh, if the most closely nested declaration is at uh, so, uh, is at x uh, uh, is at nesting depth i like here. Uh, so, um, so, here the uh, for getting the uh, uh, x, y, etc. So, we know that it is at, uh, at level 2. So, that way it can. Uh, uh, so, the for x is at nesting depth 2, then d2 will point to the activation record for the location for x. And then we can use relative address within activation record to access x. So, this is basically that frame pointer plus minus for local variables and parameters. So, that is there. 
so this says that uh, to go to a particular depth so you don't need to go traverse by the access links so you just uh, look into the index of the display and uh, get it uh, come to the access link so in this particular example say maximum nesting depth is 4 because there are four procedures so maximum nesting depth is 4 uh, so uh, we have we have got four entries in the display so in figure a the first part of the figure M has given a call to P, P has called Q and Q has in turn called R. And now if the compiler has to, if there is, if R is referring to X in the code of R, if it is refer, referring to X and it has to found out, then the compiler knows that the, 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 the that identifier X is in procedure P at lexical level 2. So, uh, for, by searching symbol table, it knows that X is at level, uh, level 2. So, it has to go by two levels as I was telling. So, this uh, code to generate, uh, code is generated to access control entry of the display to reach the activation record of P directly. So, since this is 4 and this is 2, so it will do 4 minus 2, 2, so it will come here directly. And here also as I was explaining that this x, y, z, so if P is referring to some, uh, some uh, variable which is not defined in P2, then this compiler will know that whether it is defined in M or not. If it is so, then it will know that what is the difference between these two levels. So, this is at level 2 and this is at level 1. So, 2 minus 1, 1. So, it will know it will immediately find the index 1. So, that way it can uh, this it can utilize this display so that we, we, we do not need to traverse by the links. We can uh, directly come to the corresponding um, we can directly come to the corresponding um, uh, activation record. But maintaining display uh, is a problem because this compiler has to do something extra for maintaining the displays. At runtime, this has to be done. So, compiler has to generate appropriate code so that these displays are maintained. When a procedure P at nesting depth i is called, so we are uh, doing this uh, uh, these actions. Save value of di in the activation record for P and set di to point to new activation record. So, this uh, di will be saved in the activation record. So, previous display value will be saved. So, that will be because uh, because when coming back we will need to restore the uh, this uh, display index value. So, that way it is saved there and then di is di points the new activation record. And similarly, when a procedure p finishes di will be reset to the value stored in the activation record for p. So, that uh, the, 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 the display gets restored to its proper value. So, you can just try out uh, these things and uh, try to see like it is really happening like that. Next, we will be looking into an example where uh, we have got a set of uh, procedures uh, nested like this and then we are uh, going to use, uh, uh, we are going to see like how this activation records will look like. Okay. In the first part of the problem, so we will see how this activation records will look like in this part and then we will be going for some display based solution. So, it says that show the content or the, the, the stack of activation records at line number 6, 11, 14, 17 and 18. So, at line number 6 what has happened is, so this P has started and uh, so from the main routine. Uh, so, from the main routine that is the name of the program is x, it has given a call to p and after that it has given a call to q. So, uh, so, uh, so, at, so, at this point, so it has given a call to q. So, what happens at that point? Okay. So, a, a, x has given a call to p and p has given a call to q. So, the activation record it will be like this that I will have uh, this uh, x, p and q will be the activation records. So, this will, this will be the activation record for x, this will be the activation record for p and this will be the activation record for q. Now, as far as control links are concerned, so q will be pointing to p because p has given a call to q and uh, p, p will be uh, pointing to x. So, this will be the activation record and as far as uh, your access link is concerned, this, this will be the control uh, control links and the access links you see p and q uh, so they are not so q is not nested within p so for both of them if you are looking for some uh, variables so you have to look into x so for both of them the access link will be this x 
so this is the thing and here also this is the situation so this is the situation at line number 6 now what about uh, line number 11 so at line 11 so this one so what has happened p has given a call to uh, q uh, so sorry x has given a call to uh, q the situation is like this x has given a call to q and this uh, uh, q has uh, given a call to r and r has given a call to p so that is the situation so the x has uh, given a call to q or uh, so this situation may be made uh, more, more difficult also so let us say suppose this is a situation so suppose suppose this p call is somehow over and we are concerned about this q call then what will happen the activation record it will be looking something like this so there i will have the portions for x i will have for q i will have for r and p and for this um, this uh, control links so they will be like this so p has uh, uh, r has called p so it is like this then p this uh, uh, q has called r and then q has called uh, this uh, x has called q so this is the situation as far as access links are concerned and as far as control links are concerned so this uh, r is nested within q so if you do not find some definition then for r you have to look into q so it is like this as far as q is um, r is pointing to this as far as q is concerned so q is x so q will be pointing to x and this p will also be pointing to x, x. p will be also be pointing to x only q's uh, r's access link will be pointing to q okay so this is the situation of course, you can make it more complex. So, you can try to create the uh, record for this situation x calling p, p calling q, q calling r, r calling p. So, that is also possible like if I assume that it has it is from this line it has called p and p has uh, given a call to q and from q it has come to r and from r it has come to p. So, the situation will be in that case the situation is something like this. So, we have got x, then p1, then q, then r, then p2. Okay. Now, this uh, the uh, control links are simple control links. So, p2 came from r, r came from q, q came from p1, and p1 came from x. So, that is the control link. As far as access links are concerned, so this p1, q, and this p2 they will point to the x okay and then r will point to q so that will be the situation for axis link now at line 14 so this point so if i assume that the call is like this x to q to r x has given a call to q and q has given a call to r then the situation is x q and r and now x is um, um, so now the control links will be like this from r to q and from q to x okay because the call came from x to q to r but the access links will be like this because access link of r will be pointing to q and access link of q will be pointing to x so that is the situation at line number 17 at line number 17 so it has just given a call to p so line number 17 the situation is from x p has been called so the situation will be uh, simply like this so this is for x and this is for p 
Now, the control link is like this and the access link is also like this okay. and x to q is the line number 18. So, it is x to q. So, uh, so, if I assume that is x to q, so what will happen is that I will have two portions x and q. So, q will point to the x for activation for the control for the control link and the access link will also be uh, the access link will also be pointing to uh, x because whatever is defined in x so they can be available in q so this way we can do it using control link and this this access links now next we will see next we will solve the next part of the problem where it is done using uh, displays so how will it look like if we do it using displays the first situation is at line number 6 so that is x to p to q so x to p to q so we have got this activation record x p q and now since there are four uh, procedures so the display will have four entries in it so display will have four entries in it 1 2 3 4 and then this uh, so, so the currently valid ones are this x and q these two are only valid ones so it will be because if it, if i do not get something in q i have to look in x so, rest of the entries are not valid. So, it will be like this. Similarly, at line 11, so if I say that the call is like this that x to q to p to r, so if the situation is like this, then I will have the situation, the activation record will be like this x q p r. I am not drawing the control link so that you can uh, uh, at uh, line 11. No? So, this is sorry this is r and this is p. So, this is r this is p and then I have got uh, this uh, display 1 2 3 4 here this uh, 1 points to x and then this 2 it will point to p because if i am looking p is the currently valid one and if i do not find something in p i have to look in x only then this one so x to q to r so if we are looking for this situation then the display will be so the activation record will have three entries x q and r my display has got four entries in it 1 2 3 4 then x is there and r is defined within q so this 2 will be pointing to this q and 3 will be pointing to r okay so this way we can uh, draw the we can make the displays and that shows how these displays are going to be updated and all now so, the next we will uh, come to the conclusion part. So, we have seen that this data structure activation record it contains uh, necessary information to control program execution and compiler writer has to generate uh, uh, appropriate code for operations and a small array called display it helps in this uh, runtime environment management process and display management becomes a part of compiler's responsibility. So, uh, so the, if the display is introduced then this management code also has to be put into the uh, uh, code that is generated.